ahead on early birds. The terrible towel waivers back to the Steel City. Break it all down. Plus, Grady Jarrett shows you why two isn't always better than going deep. And speaking of two, there's a pair of high five coming to town with the Steelers. That and what it'll take for Jordan to lock up the number one seed in the playoffs ahead on early birds. Have a cup of your favorite Joe and let's talk Falcons football on early birds. Present oh, good morning and welcome into early birds. He's TJ, I'm Justin. There going to be some terrible towels walking around downtown this weekend. Ooh, one too many, if I say so myself. They love waving those things around. We'll see no. if they can send them back in the luggage after this weekend. Got the Falcons and Steelers tomorrow at the Benz and topping Atlanta's to-do list. Shock, plug up the holes. Game Three straight weeks, Atlanta's given up at least 160 on the Ooh. ground. Now, the Steelers team so far this year. They've got some injuries, but it's got to be a point of emphasis. It is a point of emphasis, especially when you run the ball in the way that these teams have done it. And you got one or the other because you don't want a team to be two dimensional. You got to make them one dimensional because of a Guess what? That means you got to add more gas to the box. Now you have more opportunities on the out. You cannot allow a team to have both ways to go. So stop one or the other, preferably. Game sealed up. For Lorenzo Carter for the Falcons says they've been keying in on rushing attack. They got they got good, a few good running backs back. Uh, with Najee and Snell and even other guys. So, I mean, we just got to be ready to stop the run and try to make them pass the ball and stop the pass. Well, speaking of the pass, as we continue on the opening drive, let's talk a little bit about Drake London. Last six games, mm -hmm. 16 for 132 yards. Mm -hmm. Now, to be fair, London does have touchdowns in two of the last three games. But DJ, are you surprised at London's involvement lately? I just I'll say this with because of how defense are tend to play in. Like you mm -hmm. think about it, yes, because guy a lot of guys paying attention to who he is because there's no Kyle Pitts on the field. But then on the other hand, defenses change. So sometimes that dictates where the ball goes. So I think there is a little how you go about trying to get him the football, but teams know it as well when he is the Cal pitch and Arthur Smith says they're working to get the rookie more involved. The numbers are what they are. Uh, he's had a big impact and will continue to job if I find you know whether he's the primary or not. If Paul's not going to him, okay, why is it not going? And so what can you do differently? And you know he's like most rookies, there's some things he's, he's got to figure out, but he but we're very pleased where he's at. We need to find ways to get in the football. And as we wrap up the Fans may need blood pressure medicine after the season's <laughs> over. Like getting the yoga or something. 12 <laughs> games, 10 of them have come down to the final few possessions. So if history is any happen again, True. Atlanta has some close late wins. Give them credit, but they're going to need more. So, Shock, how do they shore things up in the final minutes? Justin, I think it comes down to just execution in the detail. We've seen in a lot of the ball games, there's been a turnover, there's been a false start. There's kind of change or doesn't allow you to move forward. You have to make sure you execute late in the ball game. There's always four or five plays in the game that dictates the outcome, well, especially late in the sales and execution are key to getting a win or a loss. Or you know what? Just build a big lead. Make oh, Fan fans could breathe easy. Absolutely. We'll see about that. Uh, welcome on into Early okay. Birds alongside DJ Shockley. I'm Justin Felder. Got the Steelers coming into town for they got a rookie quarterback. Also a rookie wide receiver. Folks around here know well after play. Yeah, I'm still trying to get Pickett and Pickens together. I know, right? That's a unique duo, but they've grown over the past few weeks. Expect them to continue to uh, find. Yeah, George Pickens, fun guy to watch yeah. uh, on the Pittsburgh offense. Well, Shock, you know what? Everything you do, you do it big. Oh, black and yellow. Oh, I like that one. Like I'm that one. That one. Yeah. It's gonna be stuck in your head all day. I like it. It's a catchy cool. one. All right, go warm up the television. I'm gonna take the credit where I can get it. We'll <laughs> see you in a few. But first, Mike Ford addition to the Falcons' defense and special teams this year. But like every player league there's so much more to his story than his play on the field in this holiday season where everybody's thinking family ford sat down with our kelly price and shared a personal story you've got to hear about his family history take a listen when i was a kid uh my mom was with me when she was 17. um so i had i was a surprise you know my dad uh he was with a couple of friends. They were going to, uh, and he was driving, 
and the story like it was a wavy up. The car went over the ledge as he was turning, rolled over a couple times, and he was the only one. It was four people in the car. He was the only one to pass. And yeah, I lost my dad that way. And to get deeper into it, I have my dad passed. Me and my mom tried to go to my dad's funeral, and we got kicked out of there because when my grandma and them, they didn't. It was my dad's kid. So then, ten years later, down the road. My brother's dad, which is who I lost this year, he, um, it was Halloween day. We were finishing up our trick-or-treating, and he, like, stopped this car in front of his house, and he looks like, hey, Mike, you want to meet your grandma? And I was like, you know, like, me being like, Man, I only know my grandma, Lawanda. Like, I already met my grandma. Like, I know my grandma. He's like, no, you got another grandma. I want you to meet her. So I'm like, okay. He's like, when you go up to this door, knock on this door, they're going to give you your candy like normal. Ask him if this is the Ford's residence say yes just say your whole name and come back to the car so I'm a football player I walk up there with my helmet I knock on the door my grandma comes to the retreat she goes oh you're such a cute little football player I'm like thank you Dada. and I'm like is this the Ford's residence she's like yes this is I was like why well, Michael Kelly Ford jr. Um, it's like a movie. She freaking drops the bucket of candy in front of me, runs to the back of the room crying. As the little kid, a couple of it, I walk off to the car. And I walk to the car, and my dad's like, I was like, the lady just dropped the candy and ran away. He was like, all right. Today we get a call. They're calling me to go get a DNA test and da, 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 all of that. And I show up to their house, and my grandpa's like, DNA test. Like, this is my son's twin. It's just that's how that went, and that's how I met. That's how I met my dad's side of the family, and that's that's pretty much my little story. Time to get some game intel from Shock. You're invited into the film room. Get started. Sometimes we always talk about the run, game, how good the run game is, but let's break down what happens in between a particular run. That's successful. There are a lot of times we say each guy must do their own individual job. Well, I'm going to show you how each guy indicates and makes it work to work. Now, this one took place nothing but an inside zone here. But on the outside, everybody has a this guy. He's going to go out here. This makes this guy expand outside. And that comes this way. When you have this motion come this way, now you have left to block this defensive end. And then you're going to get a nice double team here. You're going to get actually a triple team up to this linebacker. And the double team comes off and you're going to get a nice block here. Let's watch it to see what's happening here. So here's exactly what you like. You got leverage here. Here's your this triple team right here on this one defensive back. But Jake is going to get this guy, and then you're going to have your center get up on this guy, and now you can see the huge already created because you're blocking on the edge. Good seal block on the outside. Created exactly what you want in the run game, and now you get up to the next level. Here's the center get up on him. Here's every guy is accounted for. Look at the hole that you have created to run through, and nobody's back here but the safeties. This is an excellent job of by the offensive line. A nice job of creating these lanes, and this is exactly what you want game, Justin, and it continues to improve every week. And this is why they're top in running the rocks. Shock Falcons looking for more running room tomorrow. Georgia looking for the Day at the Benz. More to come on Early Birds. It's SEC Championship Saturday. Take down the dogs in LSU. Plus, you can't beat two and be one. If you're getting double teamed, take things one play. That's what Grady Jarrett says. He tells us how to take care of two defenders at once. fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com store near you. Presented by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. And by Georgia Lottery, today could be the day. By Truist, committed to a And by Home Depot, how doers get more done. Welcome back to Early Birds. It's time to switch gears and talk. Brought to you by Truist. BB&T and SunTrust are now Fox 5's Justin Felder. Welcome back into Early Birds.
Former Falcons wide receiver Michael Jenkins talking a little college ball and only one place to start today. Championship just down the street at the Benz. I'm excited. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's going to be cement their spot as the number one team in the country. It should be a good one taking on in what can only be our Zaxby's indescribably good game of the week. That one for at the Benz. And maybe some of the shine Jenk comes off this game after LSU trying to stay perfect. Yeah. But we know this at their best, LSU can play with. You've seen it, so what does Georgia need to do well? What do they need to try and avoid having happen against LSU? I think the last few weeks they've been coming out a little slow in the mm -hmm. first half. So if they get out to a quick defense, just get after LSU and their offense. It's going to be a long day for LSU. They want to get to a fast start, get the win, and move on and see who they'll play in the, in the college football playoffs. Can't let LSU hang around in this one, build confidence. And Kirby Smart says he knows that Brian Kelly is going to have LSU ready to play. Um, he do a great job in all areas. He's very organized. He has a process. He knows how to run a program. Um, eight days. He's been tremendous. And um, you know, Valdosta State, when Valdosta State ended up, I think, playing Grand Valley State uh, for some D2 national championships, and I had left at the time they played them, but have always had respect for the job that he does and, and leader of, of men. I'll see. You think the dogs get it done today? They will. Moving on. That would mean they yeah. lock up that number one spot in the playoffs. If they can do it, that one today at four. Switching gears to Georgia Tech now. They're not playing today, but they're, they're feeling good after the news they got this week. They've got their head coach, and it's Brent Key. And well-deserving, I mm -hmm. think. He's taken over this program, and they've gone four and four with right. him at the helm. You know, one and three and four. So, you know, big wins over ranked North Carolina. So now he kind of gets to get his in there, recruit some of his players, and see what happens. And week after week, we sit here, and you've had a lot of compliments. What have you liked about him? You just like that the, the players have bought in. Oh, right. From from day one, they bought in, the faces the bought in, and he, it's well-deserved what he's getting right now. And you said the players bought in. Take a look at the players gave when they got the news. I want you to know, we can all over this country, talk to a ton of people, and at the end of the day, there was a bunch of people that had interest in being the head coach of your football team. I think we found the right person to lead you. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to your new head football coach. That was a pretty cool scene right there, yeah, Brent Key and Georgia Tech. All right. Now we get to the topic I know you're uh, not excited to talk about. No. The Big Ten, uh, we won't talk about last week. Yeah. We got the I'm sorry, we got the Big Ten title game. <laughs> Five, it's Michigan and Purdue. Here's my question. I know you're an Ohio State guy. This is how serious should we take Michigan as a national title contender? I think very seriously. Obviously, this hurts. Obviously, I'm a big Buckeye <laughs> fan, yes. But, I mean, they well deserved. Came into the shoot and whooped us. And now they have an opportunity to win the Big Ten, get into the college football playoff. They'll be, unfortunately, they're out. Blake Horm's out. And knee surgery, so but they still have a really good football team. All right, it took a big man to say that. We appreciate it. All right, Big Ten title game tonight at eight here on Fox Five. Shock, you want to carpool over to the Benz after this? What do you think? I'm down with that. I'm all <laughs> into the World Cup right now. And Jenks, sorry, I know that, was but uh, good job, buddy. All right, man. When, when you're as good as Grady Jarrett, no offensive line issue you one on one. That's why a lot of the time Grady has to deal with two guys at once. Here's Grady Jarrett on dealing with double teams in this week's going deep. Can't beat two until you beat one. Okay. So when you focus on beating your, you know, you got to beat that before you do the other one. Because if you go fighting two people at one time, they got a kind of advantage on you. But if you can focus all your energy and take a little, so why are you focusing on one? You beat him, then you go to the other one. So it's like in life, like you get hit with all these problems, just in some way. And if you look at it as a whole, it's like, dang, I've got all this stuff coming from different directions. But if I focus on doing at a time that's dealt with deal with this one at a time and that's dealt with so it's buddy you got yeah the more work that come to you you got to give that much more work and effort back to it so and expect it you got to expect it you know what i'm saying now if you're going against one thing and not expecting something else to come against you now you just setting yourself up a failure because i'm, go, I'm going against one person and then something come out the, the woodworks and i'm not expecting it. but if i'm going working on something and then expecting someone now I'm ready, you know, so just staying prepared and uh, dealing with the problem in front of you before. Facing double teams just like life. Grady is not the only high five alum we're going to see on Sunday. In fact, watch the Steelers. You might be seeing double. We'll tell you about the Hayward on early birds. 
You're watching Early Birds, presented by Mercedes Benz on your official home for Falcons football. Fox 5. Everybody knows that feeling, right? You step right and you're going to be feeling the consequences for a few days or even weeks. But in the NFL, those kind of injuries. And then there's the dreaded high ankle sprain, which most of us never have to deal with. We get to the bottom of the difference in this week's Emory Road to Recovery. Talk about ankle sprains, we typically talk about high ankle sprain versus low ankle Okay. Low ankle sprains are your kind of your more common ankle sprains that are going to the outside part of the ankle, this is the lateral side of the ankle, this is the foot, and you're usually going to have some kind of rolling mechanism where you say you rolled your ankle, where the ankle's turning in. And what happens in an ankle sprain is the ligaments that are on the side of the fibula bone that attach down to your foot bones stretch. Low ankle sprains in our grade one are very, very common, are typically safe to be able to play through, and there's not a lot of downtime from them. We can easily treat them. We can use a lot of taping techniques, um, ankle braces, and other things like that, where guys are pretty successful at playing with better fairly quickly. When they're grade two or grade three, there's a little more disruption in the lower ankle ligaments, and that can sometimes take a little longer to heal. But this is a very safe injury that does have a great healing potential, and Yourself back to normal and get you know the athlete kind of full strength and recovery usually no more than four weeks at the most higher ankle sprains though or different sprains involve the ligaments up here between the tibia or the shin bone and the fibula oh i feel those high <laughs> myself a family reunion for the pittsburgh steelers we'll tell you about the brothers on both on early burns has been presented to you by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. Score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes. Tale of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. All right, Chuck, time for our play of the day presented by Lucra. <laughs> competition app. Here's the question. Will Steelers wide receiver and your Bulldog uh -huh. George Pickens score a touchdown against the Falcons? Oh, that's a good one. I want to. Can I say no? Wait, no. <laughs> I don't think he scores. I don't okay. think he's only got two in a year, so I don't think he does. He just makes these spectacular catches, but he maybe does. they don't happen in the end zone. We shall see. If you want to compete head to head with your friends, just code on your screen. Well, there are high five alumni just about every week. This one is interesting. <laughs> two brothers who both played together for the Steelers. Cool. Unbelievable. I mean, it's pretty cool. I mean, well, they don't happen too often. Yeah, we're talking about the Hayward brothers here, separated in age, different positions. That was Connor Hayward you saw a moment ago, and then, of course, you got Cam Hayward right guy. here. He's the three-time All-Pro heartbeat of the Pittsburgh defense for so long doing push-ups. And this year, <laughs> he was joined on the team by little brother Connor, who's an H. Fullback. They both went to Peachtree Ridge High School. Their dad, Ironhead Hayward, mm. he was a longtime NFL fullback. Now they are reunited in Pittsburgh. Me as Connor. Um, Cam's a great leader, great player, uh, and everybody knows that, but I'm my own man, and, and they've treated me like I'm my own. I thank them for that. Uh, obviously, I know the Hayward name uh, has a lot of pressure here, but the more pressure, the better, and um, I'm used to that. But um, I think it, it's really cool to play with my brother and learn a lot of things. And I played with my brother Corey before, but never Cameron because the, the age uh, or the gap difference in our mm -hmm. age. Several cool. years apart, joined up with the Steelers, Peachtree Ridge alums. All right, Shock, Steelers, give us one more matchup to watch. Don't let Minka Fitzpatrick get you. He's right. really good on that back end. Make sure he doesn't take the ball away from us. Playmaking safety. We'll see what yes. Marcus Mariota and the offense have in store for him. And Pittsburgh. Well, that's it for us here on Early Birds. For DJ Shockley, I'm Justin Felder. Thank you. Have a good morning and a great rest of your weekend.